Hi everyone, welcome back to Wild Caught Vintage. My name is Randy. I am the owner of Rockabilly Raven Vintage on Etsy. And here on my channel, I love to show you all of the amazing things that I find out at garage sales, thrift stores, anywhere where I might find vintage, and in this case, a couple of antique items. I specialize mostly in clothing and in purses, jewelry, things like that, but I also get home decor once in a while. Most of the home decor ends up staying here with me. So come along with me, let me show you all of the neat treasures that I found while out antiquing with a good friend of mine. To start off with, we were in a tiny little town in Eastern Ohio called Berlin Center. And this antique store was sort of the antique store that never ended. It just kept going, 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 which was a blessing for us because I found so many good things in this antique store and they were affordable. I could either get them for resale or I could get them for myself. The majority of the items that I got today were for resale, but there were some really great pieces and I'm so excited to see that antiques dealers are starting to stock clothing and purses and things like that at an, a good enough price that someone like myself who is a collector or maybe you or even someone who might know what something is and be able to sell it at a larger market could pick them up and resell them too. So to start off with, my first piece is an awesome 1940s green rayon dress. I'm gonna lean forward. Look at that print. Isn't it just beautiful? Oh, nice big A-line skirt. It's got that beautiful V neckline. It is homemade with a, a metal zipper here in the side. It is in beautiful condition and um, no damage here on underarm areas. There is a little bit of wear on the sleeve and what I'll probably do is roll that hem over and tack it back down or I might leave it and allow someone to modify it how they may wish. But regardless, had no stains, no, no major problems and I got it for $15 with a 30% off in the booth so it ended up only being you know roughly 10 bucks yeah 10 bucks it is too small in the waist for me so I'm going to get this beautiful dress dry cleaned and potentially fix that little sleeve here on the side and put that up in the store I'll probably do an Instagram story on this one because, oh, so pretty. So, that was the very first thing that I found. Next. Ooh, sorry. <laughs> Next, I found an old, and I mean like 1910s. Look at that, look at that waistline. Oh my gosh. Novelty print skirt. And what's really fascinating about this little skirt is if you look back here in the back, it has room for a bustle. See that pleating back there? It's got room for a bustle. It is definitely a floor length. I'm going to guess maybe a walking skirt. The reason I say 1910s is because it is still machine stitched. The stitching looks like it is potentially um, an electronic machine versus a, um, a trendle sewing machine. So that's why I think it's in the 1910s, maybe even the 1920s. Could have even been um, a remake or a refashion from then. Uh, but like I said, look! at that very 22 to 24 inch waist so this is a wonderful piece this cotton is 100 percent cotton and that beautiful print either someone is going to put this in a collection 
of antique clothing or they may repurpose it and use all that beautiful fabric. I know, it's sacrilege, I know. But uh, regardless, I found it for you. Um, I did not pay very much for it because it does have a couple of rest spots on it, but I can get that out in the laundry. I think I paid four or five dollars for it. I can't even get the fabric for four or five dollars. So I was very excited to find that very fun piece. On that same rack in the same little booth, thank you antique booth owner, there was this. Forget the little safety pin, that was just the price tag. It's a circle skirt. I'm gonna go big, ready? It is a full circle 1950s skirt with belt loops. Oh yeah. The coolest little pocket. Look at this little pocket. I think there would have been like ribbons crisscrossed in there and I think you could color coordinate it with your outfit. Really, really nice little button. Great little metal zipper. Um, it does have a couple of little spot stains that I'm gonna treat and then dry clean. Um, I may not be able to dry clean my two cotton pieces. It's not great for the fabric, so those might end up being a hand wash. Um, that was also only a couple of bucks, probably because of a little bit of staining. I think somebody who wore that skirt liked coffee as much as me. Obligatory coffee break. I'm gonna write that somewhere. You watch. All right, so my friends, I hope you have made it all the way to this point in my video because now the good stuff starts. Oh, I don't know if I can sell this. Look, are you ready? Oh, it might be lost because it's black. Look, it's all matching my outfit today. This unbelievable black blouse is from the 30s and it has these really great buttons and look at the waist on it I hope you can see it because I can't see you I realize it probably just completely killed the light but it was worth it because this beautiful 1930s blouse has about a 32 inch waist maybe a 34 and it is in absolutely perfect condition at one point it had a tag um, all I can still make out is fab Akron Ohio come on look at the oh there it is took the camera a second really beautiful I am going to gently clean that beauty and decide if I can live without it or not. That one was four or five dollars, so I was really excited to find that piece. It's absolutely beautiful and it has a bigger waist size. Yay! So again, all of this at an antique store in the middle of literally in the middle of nowhere. Fantastic little 1950s white blouse. The light's gonna be just, hello light, stop messing up. No, it's a white blouse and it's a button back, a button back blouse. Um, actually there's a really awesome tag that it's a nylon blouse and kind of sheer. This one, Looks like it'll probably fit me, and I need a white blouse for my high-waisted trousers, so that one will probably stay here with me. It was only 4 or $5 again. Yay. All right, now the last piece of clothing, and definitely the oldest. I am going to wash this and let it soak for a little bit, but I couldn't believe it was really in great shape, and it was so darn pretty. Oh. Let me see if I can show that to you better. All right, there we go. Ooh, gosh. All right, I have to be delicate with it. So I know the light got really messed up and janky with it, but can you see 
It's beautiful lace. It is a Edwardian bodice blouse. The reason that I say it is a bodice blouse is it's for a wasp waist S-curve bodice. And I'll probably put a picture in here so you can see what I'm talking about. What's so cool about this is that it is not homemade. Oh, look at that tag. Can we talk about Betty? Oh, the Betty. Size 38. Size 38 is not referring to the waist. I'm assuming that they're referring to the bust, considering it is a bodice blouse. Um, this is, it's an absolutely, other than tinged, it's an absolutely beautiful shape. And it has these really beautiful little cuffs and like the tiniest buttons I've ever seen. Look at the little buttons. Ooh, it was just so cute. Um, the reason that I picked this up is I do have a lot of wonderful customers all over the world who are into Victorian and Edwardian fashion, who are into Victoriana, who are into steampunk. And I love finding original pieces that they could still wear. Um, that is is the highlight of my day when I can do that. So this one still needs a little bit of love. Gotta wash it, gotta get it brightened back up. But this is gonna go up in the store and I'm really excited about it because the lace is intact and it was in really good shape. And I think I paid $2 for it. Oh, if only there had been more. All right, so my next piece is a hat. It is a 1920s cloche oh my gosh look at this beautiful pink hat so pretty um, let me see if you can see the tag it's really faded can you see that isn't that great um, the actual velvet I can't make it out. I'll see if I can get a picture and I'll post it, but it's just beautiful and I love cloche hats. I don't find them often, look at that bow. But when I do, um, this one was $5. Sold, it can just stay right there. Um, I have such long hair that unless I do major curls and like really pin it up, I have a hard time doing the 1920s aesthetic but it doesn't mean I don't want to try. So, all right, now. You would think all of that was such a wonderful find, and it was, absolutely, but wait, friends, there is more. At the same, these are all from the same antique store. I found an unbelievable tapestry bag. Look at this. One, look how big this thing is. It is like huge. It's absolutely amazing. As you can see, the needle point on it is on point. I know, I know. And it is in absolutely perfect condition. There is not a single thing wrong with this bag. Bottoms are good. Handle is in fabulous condition. I love the lilies. Oh, they're so cool. Um, Forgive me, there's something inside for me to show you later. Inside is in a really fantastic condition. It did have a tag at one time. The tag is sadly gone. Hi, light. Come back. Light. Oh, well, we're just going to have a blue moment. Forgive my blue moment. Oh, look, I'm back. Figuring this stuff out, guys. Thanks for being patient with me. I got this bag for $8. Yep, $8. I think it will probably stay here because how can I pass this up? My 1990s 2000 goth girl can't get over this. This is awesome. I am so excited about this. I'm going to have to take a picture with it, post it. Oh, so good. All right. So, sorry for leaning out of frame, but I ran out of space on the couch. 
So, look at this same antique store. Got it for five or six bucks, right? Looks like a Nantucket handbag, right? Wrong. It is, of all things, and maybe somebody out here is already yelling at the screen going, Randy, it's a, it's a tea caddy. It is for keeping your tea and cups so that you can go out for a spot of tea on the lawn with unbelievably cool fabric. Did we, let's just look at the fabric one more time. I love that fabric. So. I think this is the coolest thing ever. I do not know if I'm going to repurpose it yet or if I'm going to leave it as is. I do drink tea. Tea is my thing, as well as coffee. I don't discriminate around here. But look at this beautiful hinge. The bottom is awesome. It's in great shape. Big, fantastic hinges in the back good handles, no breakage. This little tea caddy purse was five bucks. It was totally five bucks. Even if I rip the guts out and turn it into a handbag, it's completely and utterly worth five bucks, right? It was fantastic. Last thing, well, not the last thing. Take that back, rewind. I picked up glasses. Remember I just said that they were 50 cents. See if you can see it. Uh, there it is. 50 cents. When I checked out, the lady who probably owned the place was not entertained that I got all of these unbelievable vintage glasses for 50 cents a piece. These are dirty, no judging. They, look at the ring light. Woo! That is so creepy. So these are just little wire frame glasses. What I get these for is I clean them up and make sure that they work and they're in proper working order. But I get them for my friends who are fellow reenactors like myself. Especially my friends that are reenactors of anything from Civil War all the way up through like World War II. Um, look at these rounds. Ugh, the ring light looks ridiculous. Look at they got the wrap, ear wrap. Oh, awesome. Um, those of us that like to do reenactment, um, we need pieces like this so that especially if we have prescription glasses, we can wear them and not have to break character in any way. So I love to pick these up and have them available for men and women to use um, as we reenact. So, um, we got one more pair. Oh my gosh. Um, these ones are a little more worse for the wear. Um, they actually had a big light on the back and it cracked. But I would think that's kind of cool. So I will clean these up and make sure that they are in good working order. And I'll make them available to someone for an appropriate price because I already have my prescription glasses that are in um, cat eye frames, of course. Um, but I love to find these because I have reenactors ask me for, especially men, vintage wallets and wallets, vintage wallets and vintage eyeglasses um, so that they can use them for reenacting. And I am all about finding stuff for my fellow vintage aficionados. So, all right, last thing from that antique store was cotton polka dot sheets. I will probably use them for fabric, but I couldn't pass them up, and I love to collect sheets, so I got those. And so, after that little antique store, we went to another antique store, and quite possibly the most... Uh, most non-politically correct antique store I have been in as an adult. Um, if I hadn't found these two handbags and really the price was worth it, I would have left and not given these people my money because they they had signs out front that were like English only spoken here and 
just stuff like that. It happens when you're in rural America. I, I am from rural America, believe me. My name is Randy Joe. are you kidding me? But I picked up two handbags there that uh, were $4 a piece and I was, I was not impressed with at least their, their outward political stance, so. But obviously not enough to not buy two handbags, so. Here's the first one. Right, right. 1950s lunchbox bag made out of basket material and it's actually a handbag. It's not, it's not made to look like a handbag. It is actually woven as a handbag. Awesome. I'm so glad it's still summer and I can use this because it is just fantastic. Really good shape, nothing wrong with it. Absolutely beautiful. And then my last little one is this awesome little handbag. Oh, light. Get over yourself. We're going to sit here for a second. Wait for the light to come back. Come back, light. Hi. There it is. Hi. Sorry. Okay. We'll hide the bag back here. So, great, great embroidery on it. Just fun, fun flowers all over it. What a really cool design. And it was teal inside. So again, four bucks a piece on those. I'm gonna clean those up, get them all ready to go. I'll probably keep the big square one. The smaller one is not big enough. <laughs> so that's it, my friends. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope that you enjoyed this video. And if you did, consider liking, maybe hit the subscribe button and join me. Um, I love to show everyone all of the fun things you can still find out in the wild. And if you don't want to go hunt for it, come on over to my Etsy shop. I'll be happy to have it for you. If you have any questions or any comments, I would love to hear from you. Leave a little note down in the uh, comment section below. And I hope that you have an absolutely wonderful day. I hope you've been blessed by this in some way. And I look forward to seeing you again. Take care. Bye. Okay. I forgot the most important thing that I found on this little antique trip. I already turned the camera off and I just thought about it. I'm going to cut a video in. I found a starburst clock. So, found this absolutely amazing 1950s brass starburst clock from Elgin. It is absolutely beautiful. Um, unfortunately, the mechanics of it do not work anymore, so I'm going to have to replace those. But I have been very slow in my collection of Starburst clocks because they're very expensive and I want to make sure that I curate it in a way that the pieces that I find are really timeless and not super kitschy or maybe as kitschy as humanly possible which makes them timeless i hope you like this little extra piece at the bottom of the video but yeah starburst clocks bye